We are at Imagine Studio 2024, and we are joined by automation leader and Automation Anywhere MVP, Stephen Hermarka. <laughs> We're going to fix that in post with a huge applause. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Make it huge, thunderous. So, <laughs> Stephen, one thing I want to talk to you about is a lot of automation programs uh, have a challenge with the way that they do promotion and engagement, right? It's one thing to deliver killer automations that are driving impact for your organization. It's another thing to be able to communicate those across the organization and communicate value to the organization of right. what's being delivered. So talk to me a little bit about how you approach that. So I've thought a lot about promotion and engagement and a lot of people oftentimes say the same things where you know, they'll throw out the word ROI, a bunch of big fluffy words, and then they don't end up with any trans anything transformative. Yeah. So I want to try to get into something that could possibly be transformative that someone could learn from. Um, so for all intents and purposes, from my own personal purview, the way I approach uh, promotion and engagement uh, is pretty much like a two-step process that I kind of consistently just have running through my head. Okay. So uh, for step one, I just call question answer. For step two, I just call like strategy design and execution. So for step one, uh, I always have like three questions top of mind at all times. Okay. So it is, uh, who is your audience? Where do they congregate? And what brings them together? Okay. So if you can answer any one of those questions, like regardless of order, like you should start looking for the answers to the other questions. So like ultimately, as you go through that journey of getting all that information, you should just naturally transition into step two, which is strategy, design, and execution. So uh, for that, it's kind of like where creativity like comes to flourish. So like company to company, person to person, it's where people do things differently. Yeah. So it's like your success stories and your testimonials and those things are different. Oftentimes people mix them, but it's like their newsletters and things like that, but like very shallowy. Uh, that's like how I approach it. But if you want to go deeper on any of that, like I could get into it. Let's go deeper. Like, Take us deeper and maybe, I don't know if you can give an example of, of how you would approach that, um, those two steps. Yeah, so I mean, for step one, uh, an example could be like, you know, you could be on a town hall, listening, looking for opportunities. Maybe you don't even have skin in the game for the thing that you're talking about, right. but you should always be looking out for opportunities. So in that circumstance, if you found an opportunity in a town hall, very simply, you know, you know, who is your audience? Well, for starters, it's everyone in that town hall. Um, and maybe they throw up some pretty KPI metrics and a visualization saying like, these are the good points and these are the bad points. And then you should be thinking like, okay, these are the bad points. This is where I can make a play here. So uh, maybe they review those KPIs at some regular meeting at an executive level because it's on a town hall. So where do they congregate at that executive meeting where they regularly review all the KPIs and stuff? So, you know, who is your audience? Where do they congregate? What brings them together? The final one is, the thing that brings them together is the low bad KPIs. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, if you're going to make a play on that thing that you might have found like in the town hall, you could do something where, you know, just like draw it out to like its natural conclusion. So you're going to engage with the person that presented like the bad KPIs, you know, get a developer assigned, a business analyst, project manager or whatever. You're done. You get the success story. Your automation is good. So what's going to happen, natural conclusion of stuff you could do for promotion and engagement is going to be something where, you know, maybe you get an opportunity and put in a good word and you get to do a town hall. You know, you're going to get, you know, regular cadence of uh -huh. executive buy-in and you're going to get people to come to you with other things. Um, so, Stephen, one thing just yeah. before you go on, one thing I'm getting from what you, one thing that's kind of ringing in, in my head is... Uh, you're always looking for opportunities. Yeah. Like, like a lot of people would go to that town hall and say, uh, you know, after the town hall, I'll get back to my desk and think about automation. But yeah. when you're in those meetings, you're actually looking for yeah. it, exactly what you just said. Like, where are those kind of pain points and whose pain, pain points are they? And yeah. There's a million different ways that you can, like, take things further and, like, do things uniquely. So an example could be, you know, 
everyone has Active Directory basically, and a ton of people have ServiceNow. There's a ton of user data out there that you can access, you already have the rights to. Just, you know, as an example, go to the ServiceNow user table, dump it into a giant CSV, slice and dice it with some pivot tables. Maybe you want to do some generative AI, do some summarization. You could look at for pockets that have like the same job title a lot. Sure. Maybe they're doing a lot of manual high volume work. You just try to infer things from the data or you could do things like, you know, if you're in Outlook and you hit the two button and you see all the email addresses, sure. what's the starting string of, you know, a distribution list? Sure. and take it from there. Maybe there's like a keyword in there for like COE. There's more than one COE at companies oftentimes. Maybe there's one for right. SAP or Salesforce or ServiceNow. Like all these other COEs are going to get use cases that sure. they can't fulfill. So if you bridge, you know, a you know, relationship with them, you sell them on what you have. Love it. Then that's interesting. It's a way to get back stuff. Yeah, one of the things I like that you said earlier about the KPIs is like knowing the KPIs that matter to that specific audience too. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like I don't want to just always lead with a finance mm -hmm. uh, KPI if it's yeah. someone who works in operations because they care more about SLAs and accuracy and things like yeah. that. So it's knowing the right SLA for the right audience. Yeah. I do want to shift gears though because you are a prominent. Uh, bot games participant. We see you participating in all of our bot games. You've had some of the fastest times that I think we've seen in some of the most tricky challenges. So what tips do you have for people who are participating in bot games to really crack that leaderboard? So uh, I'll riff a little bit. So speaking of leaderboards, like I know you guys are putting in the work so you can have like company internal leaderboards of bot games. So I'm just gonna springboard off of that and what I said before about promotion and engagement. Yeah. So, you know, another thing that you could be doing as an example is, you know, everyone, every company is doing like a hackathon of some kind. And there's always opportunities to do automation anywhere, variants of it. So once that leaderboard becomes internal facing for bot games, something that you could be doing is offer up a prize. What's a good prize for getting a good time on a bot games internally? Often offer them up licensing. So even if you know back billing ultimately doesn't matter and it all rolls up to the same person so they're not even paying for it and you just say you're getting a license, if that's the case, who cares? Just make them feel good. Yeah, we you can get a citizen developer on. That's right. We've done some internal bot games for organizations before and it's gone really well. It's a fun way for them to try to create an internal community and sense mm -hmm. of competition. So it's been a really fun event. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Especially when you combine you know, all the generative AI capabilities, right? It's a, it's a natural natural place to be doing that, those kind of competitions. Yeah. Another little gear shift because you're a, a really, really sharp automation yeah. guy. I bet when you look at all the, the keynotes, everything that's being announced at Imagine, you're seeing all these different product capabilities. What has you fired up right now? Like, is there any piece of the product that you're really, really excited about? So there is two main things coming into this uh, that I was looking forward to. Yep. Uh, like I can't remember. Besides the this interview. Besides this interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Spending okay. time with Micah. Right. And then... Love it. Absolutely love it. Thrilled. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let him. But um, the two things I was looking forward to the most going into it: AI Governance Trust Center, yep. whatever the rebrand name is, and AI Agent Studio. Agent yeah. Studio. So anytime that you can make a differentiation between you know, automation anywhere and another uh, platform or provider, it's a great way to sell it. So if I can sell someone on AR Governance Trust Center, love it, yeah. I'll look forward to everything that's gonna drop on that. And the other thing is always just gonna be document automation because yes. I just love it. Yes. You know, I just think like AA has done a fantastic job at building it. Arguably the hardest thing you can do, I will say, in software engineering is to have a impactful, reliable, scalable yes. uh, layer of abstraction yes. that people can use. Yes. So I think IDP for automation anywhere, document automation is the way to be. No, Very that's cool. awesome. I, I love document automation too. Uh, the fact that it unlocked things like unstructured data. I mean, some of the use cases we're seeing now with document automation were the things we used to think, oh, you know, that's just not a, not a good use case. And now yeah. it's unlocked all of those. We don't care if it's structured or semi-structured or unstructured. We yeah. can take advantage of it. So, awesome. 
All right, cool. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for dropping knowledge on our audience. Sure. Thank you for sharing stuff with Mark and I. It's mm -hmm. been a great session. And I'm looking forward to the rest of Imagine and uh, everything else we're going to see come Definitely. up. Definitely. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen.